local anesthesia infra orbital nerve block also known as anterior superior alveolar nerve block local anesthesia is a local state of loss of sensation without loss of consciousness in a circumscribed area of the body due to a depression of excitation in nerve endings or an inhibition of the conduction process in peripheral nerves the nerves which are anesthetized are anterior superior alveolar nerve middle superior alveolar nerve infra orbital nerve along with its terminal branches on the face that are inferior palpebral lateral nasal and superior labial nerve areas which are anesthetized are pulp of maxillary central and lateral incisor and canines pulp of maxillary premolars and mesial buccal root of the first molar supporting alveolar bone and the labial or buccal periodontium of these teeth overlying labial or buccal mucoperiosteum in the region of the incisor canine and premolars skin of the lower eyelid and both surfaces of conjunctiva skin of lateral aspect of the nose and skin and mucosa of the upper lip indications during the oral and periodontal surgical procedures in the soft and hard tissue involving more than two maxillary teeth such as apicoectomies alveoloectomies of maxillary anterior region impacted canines and cyst restorative and endodontic procedures involving more than two maxillary teeth in the areas of acute inflammation where the infiltration techniques do not work due to acidic nature of the area where the effect of the local anesthesia is not as effective as it is in the normal tissue presence of dense cortical bone makes infiltration techniques ineffective contraindications discrete treatment areas when hemostasis in the area of surgery is desirable in such situations an additional local infiltration into the area is indicated there are two approaches to execute the infraorbital nerve block the bicuspid and the central incisor approach in this video we are going to discuss about bicuspid approach anatomical landmarks infraorbital margin infraorbital depression infraorbital foramen first bicuspid mucobuccal fold in the region of this tooth pupil of the ipsilateral eye in the forward gaze angle of the mouth mental foramen This technique is comparatively easy and is recommended for the beginners. The bicuspid approach is simple and causes minimal complications. Procedure. If we draw an imaginary line between the mesial aspect of the or the mesial side of the pupil to the angle of the mouth, considering this imaginary line from the infraorbital margin finger is moved downward applying gentle pressure to the tissue as the finger continues inferiorly a concavity will be felt this is the infraorbital depression the deepest part of the depression is the infraorbital foramen maintain your finger on the foramen or mark the skin at the site retract the lip pulling the tissue in the mucobuccal fold taut thus increasing the visibility take a preloaded syringe and insert the needle into the height of mucobuccal fold over the first bicuspid with a bevel facing the bone orient the syringe towards the infraorbital foramen the needle should be held parallel to the long axis of the tooth as it is advances to avoid premature contact with the bone initially advance the needle until bone is gently contacted care should be taken to protect the eye with thumb finger to limit the passage of the needle towards the eye technique 
The patient is placed comfortably in the chair so the maxillary occlusal plane is at the angle of 45 degree to the floor. The operator stands on the right side of the patient for right side block and stand in front of the patient for the left side block. The tissue at the site of injection are prepared with an antiseptic. Long and 25 case needle is recommended. The bevel is positioned in such a way that it is facing the bone. Three-fourth of an inch of the needle penetrates the soft tissue. Area of insertion is at the height of mucobuccal fold 4 to 5 mm away from the buccal cortex of maxilla in the region of the first bicuspid. The target area is the infraorbital nerve as it comes out of the infraorbital foramen. In this figure you can see the index finger is used to locate the infraorbital foramen. Thumb retracts the cheek and the lip. Injection is made at the mucobuccal fold near the first bicuspid. Sign and symptoms. Subjective sign and symptoms are tingling and numbness of the lower eyelid, side of the nose and upper lip. Objective. When we tap the anesthetized side, it will have no sensation in comparison to the adjacent side where there is no anesthesia. No pain during the oral surgical or periodontal surgical procedures or dental therapy. Advantages The techniques are comparatively simple, easy and safe. The technique minimizes the volume of solution to be injected and the number of needle punches to be made in order to achieve the desired anesthesia. The incisor approach lenses the possibility of inadvertently entering the orbit. It permits deeper penetration into the infraorbital canal since the direction of the needle is parallel to the direction of the canal. Disadvantage Psychological fear of injury to the patient's eye. Anatomically, it is difficult to define the landmarks. Complications Hematoma may rarely develop. Paresis of face occurs when the injection is given superficially when the needle lies in the vicinity of the muscle of facial expression or the nerve innervating them, the effects disappear as the local anesthetic effects wear off. Failure to obtain anesthesia may occur due to pure injection technique or intravascular administration. Under poor injection techniques, needle may contact the bone below the infraorbital foramen. To correct this, withdraw the needle a little. Keep the tip of the needle inside the soft tissue. Redirect upward towards the infraorbital foramen. Sometimes needle deviate medially or laterally to the infraorbital foramen. To correct this, withdraw the needle a little. Keeping the tip of the needle inside the soft tissue, redirect towards the infraorbital foramen. Thank you for watching. Please do like, share, and subscribe.